Hey guys, VBAD here with another VPlays, and this is our next installment on the Beginner's Guide series, and I think it's pretty evident that today we're going to be covering doing bombers. So there are two major schools of thought to doing bombing. There is high altitude and low altitude bombing. I prefer low altitude bombing if you've seen any of my other videos about some of my low altitude bombing runs, but today we're going to talk about bombing in general and we'll get into some of the tactics as the game progresses. So I wanted to start the game off and allow people to be able to see what high altitude bombing is and it's very much a support role. You're there to damage sites, maybe not necessarily destroy the whole facility and allow your GAs or multi-rolls to come in and mop it up, but as you can see here I'm the only aircraft headed to this zone so if I don't destroy the entire site the enemy can easily come in and snag it from me. The other thing is, sitting at high altitude, you're going to be under a lot of AA fire from the big flak cannons. So by hitting the shift button, I was able to go into this bomb reticle mode. Uh, be aware that this dark crosshair that's marked here, that's the bombardier site, that's just for you to look around. What really matters is where that white circle is. Where that white circle and crosshair is, is where the bombs are actually going to go. So we can manipulate the aircraft in this view by moving the mouse around and you can kind of tell by the vertical orientation of the line where the nose of the aircraft is pointing at that given time and it will do its absolute best to keep the aircraft completely level and that's something also important to know. When you hit shift and you go to your bomb reticle view, the bomber will essentially auto level the aircraft. So we did not take the first two sites with our single bomb and that's something to note now because you'll see later that we're going to get much more accurate bombing runs when we decide to drop down to low altitude. In fact that last site right there we were pretty much in the middle and it dropped all the way to the left where that smoke is rising from that 110 facility. So we've dropped all of our bombs. That should be enough to be able to take this zone. I'm in my tail gunner using my defensive fire trait on my on my gunner to be able to reduce the amount of incoming damage. So I've had about enough of this. I'm going to drop down to low altitude, wait for my bombs to reload. It looks like they're probably going to take this garrison off to my left and you'll see how quickly we're able to flip this capture zone. Now important notes about low altitude bombing runs. Low altitude bombing runs you are not going to have a reticle anymore. It's going to say bombing ineffective, gain some altitude. So you no longer can even see the white circle on the ground. And when you hit shift, you won't be able to go into bomber sight mode because you're too close to the ground. So you have to gauge where you're going to drop those bombs just based off of feel. So I'm waiting for the timer to tick down to unlock this garrison so we can go in and do a bombing run. And you'll see that when I drop on these facilities, those uh, larger barracks facilities, as long as I time my bomb drop right, we should be able to flip it pretty quickly with just a single bomb in each one of these sites. It's more than enough to be able to take it. I planned my run accordingly, making sure that I was lining up a series of targets, so I'm going to have to make a little bit of an S turn here, but we dropped on the first AA site, we dropped on this ground facility, then we take a turn, we're dropping on this set of barracks, and now we're going to go after this tent camp over here, drop a bomb on him. I'm boosting almost the uh, boosting periodically, and I'm maintaining really high speed for being a bomber at low altitude. And now, yeah, I didn't even need to drop there, so I'm gonna drop the rest of my ordnance off, and I'm gonna loiter for a minute as I wait for the bombs to reload. But my next target is going to be the other available garrison. So I am gonna be going underneath their spawn, but this causes some mass confusion because people see a bomber icon on the map, and they're going to assume it's gonna be at high altitude. And here I. I am at 340 feet. Typically, the bombers, the bots are flying at around eh, 6,500, 7,000 feet, somewhere in that air, that range. But the higher you go in altitude and you start to turn yellow the uh, on the altitude bar on the right-hand side, you're going to have reduced engine power, so it's harder to maneuver around the battlefield. So I'm going 350 miles an hour in a tier 6 match. That's pretty good. That's pretty good at this tier to be able to maneuver around the battlefield and really be able to affect things. So we're going to make our run onto this facility and see if we can take it out pretty quickly because getting air supremacy here would be kind of fun. <laughs> so dropped on that site. We had our route planned. We're not turning too much. 
we only need to finish that one off, and that's it. That's the entirety of this site. We only dropped three bombs. Granted, we had some allies here to help us out, but it was taking them a good amount of time. We managed to flip it pretty quick. So I'm now going to be going over to the other garrison facility and trying to take this one out. So I do have Demolition Expert on the pilot, which increases the blast radius and damage of the bombs by 15%, which is what's allowing me to be able to do a single bomb on each one of these targets. Otherwise, I might have to use two. But that's going to be incredibly inefficient because it's only going to take just a hair more than what your bomb's damage can already do. It's also important to note that these bombs have a large blast radius, so they can actually blow up an aircraft if they're caught in the blast radius. Oh, would you look at that? That was a player chasing me and his mosquito, and I took him out. Not only did that destroy the site, but it also allowed me to kill an aircraft, which gave me some more capture points, and I didn't even need all of my bombs. I was able to capture that site. We got air superiority, and that's the end of the game. Low altitude bombing can be a lot more entertaining and a lot more fun. Uh, I definitely enjoy it, but I do think that there's a game mechanic in here that's getting broken as a result of it. I don't think Wargaming ever intended for this to actually happen, and if there's ever anybody running a low altitude bomber, typically they're going to have the upper hand. But we'll talk more about that in the post game. All right, let's start by taking a look at the post-game stats, because I'm sure there's other things to discuss here. So, capture points received. You get capture points by destruction of ground targets. It's very specific. you got to destroy ground targets in order to get those capture points. Killing an aircraft over one of those zones well, will help you flip the zone, because you'll be gaining capture points for your team. You aren't gaining it towards your sub-objective. So just be aware of that if any of you get a bug up your butt that you're going to use this thing as a counter-air platform. It doesn't work. Looking at sections of ground target dis targets destroyed, those are going to be the actual individual buildings inside of a site. So I think the way Wargaming was envisioning bombers to be was uh, like a support aircraft. It wasn't necessarily going to take out whole sites because it's not super accurate and you might be able to do it. But if you only damage it and break a couple of the buildings, that's still okay because that allows your GAs and multi rolls to come in and finish it off. So you're still going to get points towards these sub-objectives in this category. Sectors captured goes without saying each zone you capture is going to give you some points towards your sub-objective in order to get to your next point. This is uncharacteristic and kind of game breaking to fly bombers at low altitude because if you go ahead and look at the tech tree and see the description wargaming put in here on the bottom right hand side underneath the pros and cons these pluses and minuses you'll note that the third plus from the bottom says very effective in destroying ground targets by bombing them from high altitude well two questions wargaming what's high altitude and Really? You're letting me bomb at low altitude. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to knock you guys, but I feel like this can really ruin the game for a lot of people because you saw how easily I was able to go and flip those zones. Unless the enemy has a ground attacker or a bomber who might be able to compete with me, it's going to be really tough to stop me. And even if you can get your heavy fighters to come down and engage me, now they're not in their proper engagement envelopes, so they're going to be at a massive disadvantage as well. My suggestion for fixing this game mechanic, <clears throat> excuse me, if any Wargaming representatives ever watch this video, is if you want these bombers to operate at high altitude, I offer two things. One, make it so they can't bomb at low altitude. Set a minimum threshold for bombing, and then you have to be bombing in reticle view. So you got to hit the shift button to go to your bomber site. That makes sense because a bomber's not supposed to be able to bomb without a bombardier in the seat, right? And flying at low altitude, it's not what these were really meant to do with the exception of the A-26. So I build that into your mathematics of what's going to be the min altitude I let you bomb at because by leaving this ambiguous, you find a lot of players read that third from the bottom plus there and say oh high altitude and they climb up to like 10,000 feet in a tier 6 match and nobody can touch him which is fine they're not going to be effective at bombing I usually ignore them anyways but it's just a massive nuisance especially if you got to kill that last aircraft in order to win the battle so encourage them to be at a lower altitude for accuracy but don't let them get so low that they're going to ruin the game like I apparently ruined that game for the other team 
But if you're going to have us operate inside of an envelope, please, please, please buff the guns a little bit. I'm not saying like make them detrimental. Like the RB-17's tail gunner is nasty. I, I took out a 262 that was chasing me the other day, and he was really confused as to what had got him. He was actually one of my clan mates. He goes, "Was that the tail gunner?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "I'm not, I'm not chasing you anymore. It's just too dangerous." So if something. In between there would be nice just to, to kind of adjust it, but uh, I am now off my soapbox and we will go back to talking about the bomber itself. So let's go back to the hangar and we'll talk about some of the equipment that I use on the airframe. So when it comes to the equipment, I'm using a different load than I would actually suggest. What I would suggest is running concealing livery, which I do have here. It reduces incoming AA damage by 30%. Granted, you're not going to be getting shot at by the heavy artillery at high altitude, but it'll still reduce the amount of machine gun, the ground machine gun fire that's coming at you. Uh, but if you do opt to go at higher altitude, this is also advantageous because you're going to be sitting in a bomb site and going in a straight line. So you're going to take a lot of flak damage. So it's great to be able to use concealing livery to reduce that incoming damage so you can survive longer, which then brings me to my next point. Reinforced airframe. Reinforced airframe, it gives you a bonus to reduce critical damage, and that's, that's great and all, but I'm not too concerned about that because I'm not going to be maneuvering a whole lot. Uh, it's great that it keeps the engines up, and it great, it's great that it keeps the crew up, but the real advantage I'm looking for here is going to be the plus 15% to the aircraft HP. That's huge. That allows me to be able to survive that much longer because you really just have to tank the damage while you're doing your bombing run. Uh, I have turret stabilization because I was being silly. I wanted to see what I could do if I could increase the effective range of those turrets. But what I actually suggest you do is run improved covering because this also gives you an HP buff uh, and it'll also reduce your incoming uh, critical damage to wings and tail. Again, I care less about that as much as I care about the HP buff. That's for me for alti low altitude bombing. That's what I suggest. If you're going to be the guy who goes and does high altitude, and I do suggest high altitude is not space, but high altitude being around eh, 8,000 feet, 7,000 feet is probably reasonable using the bombs site too it increases the accuracy of the bombs you drop to make them that much more effective so it'll mitigate some of that uh, aspect of you being up high uh, early on in the video when I was bombing at high altitude it was a little bit unfair because I didn't have this on the aircraft I think it probably would have been a little bit better in the results I just don't like having to deal with the bomb drop time now these translate over to my pilot skill the one of the pilot skills I, I advocate but I advocate it second to demolition expert. Demolition expert increases the blast radius and the damage of the bombs, so you have a higher chance of destroying the site with a single bomb. But the reason I choose protection expert as soon as I can get it is that you can see its effect is it actually improves the equipment we've already put on. It improves it by 40%, so it improves your covering, it improves your reinforced airframe, it also improves our concealing livery by 40%, so they're getting that much better. And as a result of that, you can see that my total hit point pool is 1,200 hit points. That's pretty gnarly when it comes to being able to survive incoming damage. And quick test here, if I were to swap you out for a random Joe who doesn't have that capability, yep, we can start to see where the reduction takes place. So that gave us an extra 50, and it doesn't seem like it's that much, but it also increases the concealing livery, so oh, 60. So it may be the difference between life and death, and I, I prefer it. It seems to keep me alive that much longer especially with the amount of AAA fire you end up taking in these things. Uh, that then brings me to the gunner, because the gunner, if you're flying the standard bombers, the ones that are non-premium, the best you're going to get is 13 millimeter machine gun, and it's very low damage output, so you're not going to be shredding a lot of aircraft. Maybe you'll be able to take out a light fighter, but for the most part, you're really going to be using these guns to reduce incoming damage. So get defensive expert as soon as, or defensive fire as soon as you possibly can, because as soon as the guns make contact with the aircraft that was shooting at you, it's going to reduce all their future incoming damage by 30%. It can increase your survivability significantly, just letting all of these guns sing. And you have quite a few of them on the Doe 215. It's just that only one is firing at any given time when you're taking manual control. 
Quick reflexes allows those guns to start firing on that target sooner, which then reduces the amount of time you're taking full damage. So I suggest getting these two right away, especially if you're not really going to be sitting in the tail gunner too much and you just want to let the tail gunners do their own thing. That's This is a great option to have. It also, when you do manual, it allows the reticle to shrink quicker. So I do enjoy that. If you were going to go so far as to keep this aircraft for a really long time and you were going to start getting a ton of experience and a lot of skill points for this, the eventual goal would be to also get Precision Gunner, but I would not prioritize it over the other two. I would get the other two first, wait till I got my three skill points, maybe bounce the skill points before they get up to three between endurance to keep the gunners alive and the armor to increase the amount of time you can fire those tail gunners and then once you get the third point get precision gunner because this will take out modules it'll take out the pilot it'll reduce the incoming damage it'll make it harder for him to stay on your aircraft which is going to make you that much more effective <clears throat> so that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, that's that's bombers in a nutshell. They can be really boring or they can be really exciting. So it's really up to you how you want to play the airframe. Like I said, low altitude bombing seems to be the most effective for me, but your mileage may vary. Uh, as always, guys, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and I'll try not to get on my pedestal, my soapbox too often for you guys. I'll catch you on the next one.